It's time I went back and joined everyone in the small salon. You aren't expected in the small salon, sir. Johann von Wulner. Emily, I must speak to you. What's the matter, Louis? I have news about your sister. What have you found out? Look, I've started piecing together the events leading up to my mother's disappearance and your sister's. D did my mother know about your secret? Yes, even though I belong to the English chapter, her rank in the Order gives her access to a good deal of personal information. It must have been Emma I saw in my vision. I was given to understand that my mother and your sister bonded during their stay. They kept up a secret correspondence, which makes me think they were suspicious of someone. And did you find out who it was? No, but Von Volner is mentioned. They were planning to make a quick getaway and were looking to hide something beforehand. Have you got these messages? Yes, go ahead, take a look. I see. I must say, uh, thanks for your honesty, Louis. Should I speak to her about my vision? If what I saw is true, she might want to take revenge. Emily, there's something else. Go on, then. It's... it's about your sister. I don't know what happened exactly, but it's possible that my mother had a go at her. I know, Louis. I found out that same evening. Well, thanks for not trying to hide it. What? Why didn't you tell me? I didn't know if I could trust you. Now I know I can. It seems that your mother tricked Emma. She apparently asked her to hide an important book, so that even she wouldn't know where it was. And then she shot her like a dog to make sure no one would ever find it again. Why would she do that? I don't know, Louis. But I'll find out. You can count on that. I'm sincerely sorry, Emily. Thank you, Louis. But you do realize your mother will have to accept the consequences of her acts. Th there must be an explanation, Emily. That's what we shall see. Come, Louis. They're waiting for us. You will pay dearly, Peru. I'm sure you were involved somewhere along the line. That's right. Pretend you don't know. One piece of advice. Don't travel through France on your way back. Or it'll cost you dearly. Calm now, my friends. Let's calm down. Everyone seems to be a little unnecessarily heated. Don't forget where you are, please. What's going on here exactly? Sir Gregory called us together to introduce the last guest. But hardly had we arrived when he set upon Monsieur Peru. And what has Monsieur Peru done to once again provoke someone's anger? Uh, we don't really know just yet. I get the feeling it won't be long before it gets out. How could you dare do such a thing? Dios mio, you are all out of your minds! Really, Duke Manuel? What made you kick up such a farce? What? Have you not heard? Well. 
Let me inform you that yesterday morning at 10.22 a.m. precisely, in the middle of the Place de la Révolution in Paris, by decree of the National Convention which Monsieur Peru works for, King Louis was guillotined. What? The King of France is dead, gentlemen. Our monarchies are in danger. I have said it before. How dare they? Oh dear. Oh, as if Hmm. Friends, friends, let us calm down. Don't pretend to be surprised. He got a fair trial. Ridiculous, bastard. He was sentenced to death by 361 votes to 360. You beheaded a king for one vote. Is that your democracy? What an obnoxious act. Until this, anything was possible. This political coup will have grave consequences. France. He's lost. Gentlemen, please, let us take a step back a moment. In the name of holiness, he was the highest representative of God in France, Emily. Gentlemen, this news affects us all, but I must ask, it's not the first time history has taken us by surprise. Let's ensure that our respective countries are allowed to respond appropriately to this news. Oh, rest assured. The response will not fall short, my friend. Good for you. Well, Your Grace, here I was preparing to introduce you as is proper, and you've beaten me to it. I'm delighted that we are all together at last. Our meeting will therefore be able to kick off shortly. I have just a few more little preparations to take care of before you all find out the reason for your presence here. In the meantime, I shall leave you to get to know one another. When you hear the bell, please proceed to the conclave room on my left, behind that door. I'll see you later. Uh, could you spare a moment, please, sir? I'm glad you ask. I want to talk to you, too. Of course. I heard about your mother's disappearance. We look concerned. I don't know why, but I doubt it's from sympathy alone. Well, let's see what he wants from me. Any news of her? Have you found her, maybe? To hear you speak, you seem to know my mother well. Uh, not really. Uh, we met for the first time on this very spot uh, some weeks back. Uh, we had a very pleasant discussion. She's an exceptionally learned lady with a good head for business. Uh, no need for me to tell you that. I agree. Uh, did she tell you about our arrangement? Of course she did. Perfect. I'm glad to know it. So, how should we proceed then? Uh... What do you mean? Oh, come, sir. No point pretending. You know. You obviously have no idea what I'm talking about, do you? You might have come across some old books in her belongings, perhaps? I found one. Quite old? With locks on every chapter? Uh, oh no. I'm sorry, sir. This one is the Mysterium Cosmographicum, a book she is particularly fond of. Oh, no. That's not the one. Poor man's disgusted. I shouldn't play with his nerves. I'll look again. You seem very upset. Is it so important to you, this book? Well, it's... Uh... It's the search of a lifetime. What can I say? Every time I move closer to it, it seems to slip away at the last minute. I was very surprised to learn that your mother had it in her possession. I thought it was with a certain von Borchert in Paris. Do you know him? Indeed. 
My mother and I had a brush with this individual just a few months ago. What about? About an object stolen from the order a few years ago, which my mother wanted to recover. Ah. Uh, this situation comes as a great surprise to me. <laughs> I got him now. I hope I've been able to satisfy your curiosity, Mr. Von Volner, and that you succeed in finding what you're looking for. Oh, and so do I. And now, what if you told me who you really are working for, instead of keeping up this pretense? I beg your pardon? We both know what you're looking for, Von Volner. You're the one who Von Burchard was planning to sell it to. For centuries, all those who have come into contact with the Al Azif have bitterly regretted it, Monsieur de Richet. You are playing a dangerous game. Please know that I am working for someone who does not appreciate anyone poking around in his business. Let me guess. It's Sir Gregory. Correct. You ought to know then, he is not a man who likes to be duped. You are walking on thin ice, sir. Monsieur Bonaparte, may I speak with you a moment? May we? Does expression go beyond the nightmare mean anything to you at all? Well, metaphorically, yes. It sums up the career of a soldier quite well. I doubt that is what you want to hear, though. Indeed. That's surely not what I'm looking for. Well, monsieur, if you are looking for a phrase book, Lord Mortimer must surely have one, given the number of books he has. You ought to check in the library of the tower. You never know. What do you think of Duke Godoy? Well, I'd rather not express any opinion of him. Why is that? His reputation is enough for me. I'm sure that a soldier such as yourself is not interested in vulgar rumors. Quite right. If only this cursed gossip didn't come to stain the uniform he has the audacity to wear. Don't you find him worthy? But how could he be, monsieur? He never sets foot on the battlefield to occupy with charming the queen. Have you any idea of the number of titles that coward has won in just a few years? No, not really. Ten! And that Don Juan spends the best part of his time under the queen's skirts. The bugger must have some hidden talent, given all of the gifts she gives him. I understand your point of view. Well, I'll be leaving you now. Shall we meet up again later? Uh, wait, monsieur. Any news of your mother? Unfortunately not, no. I hope to speak with her about my deal before I leave. Let me know if you find her. A plus tard, monsieur.
Saturn devouring his son. Good God, how awful. Everything in this painting is disturbing. It's the first time I've seen brushstrokes like this. Ah, Louis. Just the man. Good lord. How did the king come to be executed? I would think that the order would have intervened. Your eminence, I haven't been following the case. I'm sure that the order did everything in its power. Unfortunately, you know the situation in Paris, and, well, it's chaotic at best. Anything can happen in those revolutionary tribunals. The king is the official representative of God on Earth, my son. Your eminence, France has become a secular state. The king was just another citizen to them. He refused to admit his errors, looked down upon them, and attempted to escape. What did he expect? France has lost all reason. I invite you to speak about it with my mother as soon as she reappears. Is there any news of her? I... well, I hope it won't be long before I find her, Your Eminence. Louis, I'm counting on you. If you don't find Sarah before my departure, I must ask you to give me back the letter I gave you. Well, don't worry about that, Your Eminence. Now you wanted to speak to me. If I say the nightmare to you, does it make you think of anything? Hmm. Your question is strange, my son. Hmm. Difficult to say. Could you at least tell me a little more about the context? Well, I mean, if it were a place or an object found on this island, what would you think of first? Hmm. The nightmare. No, I don't see anything. I'm sorry. Well, that's too bad. Ah, wait! I suppose it might be that horrible painting hanging in Lord Mortimer's study. Pretend not to be that interested. Right. Well, don't worry about it. I was... I was just curious. I was wondering what to think of that Manuel Godoy. He is reputed to be a very ambitious character, at every level. But his fate is unwavering. He is a staunch defender of the Church. You can believe me. As to his faith, I have no doubt. However, his ambition seems to surpass his morality. And I hope that it will not solely the crown. You can say that again. The blue eyes of the latest Infanta, Maria Isabel, have left everyone wondering. Rumors always accompany men of power, Your Eminence. Naturally. But the number of awards and titles granted by the Queen during these past four years leaves 
complete and bound. So, Godoy really is this out-and-out -out rascal who uses his charm on the Queen. Thank you for everything, Your Eminence. I shan't take up any more of your time. You are welcome, my son. I will be seeing you, Louis. Dining on ham. Well, that's very appetizing. The Miller Brothers. Mother expressly forbade me from reading it. Celia, that name means nothing to me. The Last Supper by Leonardo da Vinci. The last day before his crucifixion, Jesus announces that he will be betrayed by one of his disciples. The Song of Roland. Roland feeleth his death is near, his brain is oozing by either ear. With his brain oozing, it's already remarkable that he can feel anything. Amber crystals. There's the alchemical symbol of the earth on the lid. A fragment of amber. Bazant.
So, what did my mother mean by going beyond the nightmare? Hmm, which four-letter word could open this chest? Might come in handy. Let's take a closer look. These chocolates are probably a protocol gift. Everybody in Europe loves them nowadays. Marie Antoinette, the Queen of France, has her own personal chocolate maker, Versailles. They say it's her guilty little morning ritual before getting dressed. A cup with one sugar and some vanilla, if I remember rightly. I would be surprised if Mortimer has them delivered straight from South America. Dark chocolate beans. Very bitter. They're greatly prized in high society. Now, what have we got here? Well, it looks like a model of honey, the remedy of the gods. The nightmare painted by Fusili in 1781. Ah, this must be what my mother was talking about. Now, just need to find out what she meant by go beyond. Hey, looks like it's mounted on rails on each side. It should lift up, I think. There must be a mechanism somewhere. Aha! I found it. Oh, what on earth is this? A ring lock now? Great. That's all I needed. A bird. Tell me the door code. Here I am talking to a bird. Shame on me. Sarah Deriche? Waldo, you know Sarah? What? 
Repeat that, Waldo. Sarah... What about Sarah? God, what's been happening here? This painting isn't finished. It looks like Mortimer probably did it. Not bad, but we can't exactly say it's been done in the style of the period. Kudu Lost by Paul Rubens. Christ on the cross as Longinus pierces his side with his spear. Rubens, he was a great painter. Two dates on this painting, 1154 AD and 5154 AL. A painting depicting the Third Crusade. It's titled Winter Before the Fall of Saint Jean d'Acre. Siege of Saint Jean d'Acre was a major conflict during the Third Crusade. Richard the Lionheart and Philip Augustus fought to take the town back. It was the Crusaders' first operation to take back the Kingdom of Jerusalem. Alexander Mortimer I, the twelfth month of Anna Lucis, 5190. It's a funny date. I thought I was close. 1,190. Isn't the right date when you subtract 4,000? I must have missed a subtlety. <laughs> Open sesame. <laughs>
is my mother's writing. I've picked up her trail. What is she up to? Obviously, she wants to lure Mortimer somewhere, but, but where? The only clue she's left for Mortimer is his stone sword. It must be intentional. It looks like a decorative sword, like from a statue, for example. And judging by the state of it, I'm guessing it's been left outside for a long time. I have absolutely got to find out where it came from. Indeed. France in favor of Italy. Could Mortimer have decided to finance a war? It shows the forces present in Europe. It's clear that France is surrounded by her enemies. However, a large number has been underlined in bold. 26 million. I know what it is. It's an estimation of my country's population. All our neighbors have far fewer inhabitants. Weakness of the Human Psyche by Gihem Trimor. Hmm. He says, It is possible to drill an idea into someone by constant daily repetition until the mind gives in. And goes on, There are hundreds of good ways to live life, but you only need one to convince the masses that it's the only one possible. <laughs> the author isn't letting any ethical principles get in his way, is he? shows the forces present in Africa. This is unexpected activity in this sector. It looks like there are also many unknowns even for Mortimer. Moreover, it shows a fair number of sea voyages being organized towards the American continent. <laughs> no doubt with slaves. How many men are broken in this trade? Tens of thousands each year, according to what people say. Some of those forces are pushing toward the west. On it, 
Mortimer's placed little feather symbols at different points toward which the Spanish are headed. Could he be fueling Indian resistance to slow down Spain? This shows the forces present in America. Locked. Preservation using formaldehyde. Just as disgusting as ever. Something strange about this table. What kind of experiments does Mortimer carry out here? It's a dissection table. So Mortimer does autopsies here on his desert island. But who is he doing autopsies on then? The Little Surgeon's Perfect Collection. like obsidian or onyx. Must weigh a ton. Strange. I don't recognize the alphabet. I wonder where the pictograms are from. It isn't Egyptian or Hebrew. There are two inscriptions on the sides as well as on the top. No way to know what's underneath. Absolutely no idea what it's for, but I find this cube fascinating. Feathers. Pigeon, probably. A skeleton by the name of Gustav, if the plaque on the plinth is anything to go by. Mortimer's given a name to his anatomy skeleton. <laughs> That's morbid. Oh, his right hand is missing. table of alchemical elements. So, Lord Mortimer also studies alchemy? It seems like he's interested in everything. A chest with a motif representing the alchemical symbol of fire. chest with a motif representing the alchemical symbol of fire.
not seeing things or is that an actual von Leeuwenhoek microscope? Incredible. Mortimer really is at the cutting edge of science. Even at the order, it took us ages to get one of those. for writing the hoeing pigeon messages. Skulls, chicken legs. Now we all know what that's for. I'm a little surprised at Mortimer. I didn't seem as the type to be organizing little pagan parties, invoking occult powers, and dancing naked under the full moon. I'm more used to seeing cheap charms like this sold by charlatans in Pré Saint Gervais. An iron mask. I wonder who it's for. Tarot cards. Has he been reading the cards? Mortimer? <laughs> that would surprise me. It is a typical draw in a line that answers a specific question. To the left, temperance. That announces a reward for one who patiently waits before taking any action. And in the middle, the chariot, which symbolizes triumph and business success. To the right, the Emperor evokes a future full of power and stability. Three rusty old nails. They're about 20 centimeters long. strange about this table. Oh shit, how am I gonna get out of here now? Let's see what you've been hiding, Lord Murderer. Um, 
This looks like the same mechanism as the one on the other side. It looks too easy. It could be a trap. Looks like the same as the one on the other side. It's locked. Three rusty old nails. They're about 20 centimeters long. This looks like the same mechanism as the one on the other side. Now, what have we got here? Well, it looks like a model. A model of a lock. It's as if Mortimer is fond of complicating things sometimes. Well, I hope I never have to try and unlock it.